We have a 2007 Chevy Avalanche with a 5.3 liter. It's getting close to the 270,000 mile mark and it has the dreaded oil consumption problem. We're going to replace the valve cover as soon as it shows up from FedEx. Said it was coming yesterday, but shows it was delivered yesterday, but we never received it. Do you think a new valve cover with the updated PCV system is going to cure our oil consumption problem and our smoke at startup? Well, I hope so, because it's kind of embarrassing to start this truck up in a crowd. We finally received our valve cover after uh, FedEx dropped it off at the wrong address. Lucky we have good neighbors, and one of them dropped it off at our door. Uh, this is the updated valve cover with the updated PCV system. This here hole is a little different from what I'm seeing online. Uh, we'll take the other one off, compare the two. Uh, this came with uh, with gaskets and bolts and all the seals we need, so it's ready to bolt on. And there goes my cloud of smoke on startup. Now we'll start by pulling the engine cover off. It just pops up. And slides out of the way. Gives us a little more room. Next we'll pull off the spark plug wires. And with a 10 mil socket, we'll pull off the rack of coil packs. Guess we should unplug this first. A little safety clip on it. There it goes. Two more. I'm not very optimistic this is going to work to cure the oil problems totally anyways. It's quite heavy oil consumption for just a faulty PCV system I think. Be nice if it did work completely. We have only been using this avalanche for uh, for winter use, basically, for a, keep the salt off the new truck. All right, that comes out just as a unit. Then, as you can see, we'll set it aside.
back in the corner there is where the PCV hose comes out of the valve cover. We'll pull that off next. And there is oil coming out of there. As you can see, there's a little bit on the glove now, so I guess that's a good sign for that being faulty and this may, may be a fix. We'll pull that hose off the top too and get it right out of the way. Yeah, that's, it's wet. Eh, might work, I guess. Four valve cover bolts. Oh, uh, I'm not sure what size they are. Maybe eight mil. Have to get a socket for that. Yep, eight mil it is. Measure drive. Or quarter inch drive too. I guess they say. Get this spinning the right way. I can't see much with my arm in the way, can you? Last one. I'm kind of curious to see how much sludge and crud, crud is going to be under the valve cover with almost 270,000 on it. We have been running synthetic oil mobile one uh, since I purchased it with just uh, a few thousand miles on it well, let's have a look well, that's fairly clean Try to get a, a view in here. It's really quite clean. Surprisingly so. Apparently that theory of changing your oil often and using good quality oil pays off. We did buy the uh, GM replacement part. We didn't buy the uh, the cheap Dorman junk. Um, not sure if the quality of the Dorman stuff. It's most of it's junk, so I try to stay away from it whenever we can, especially when the GM part was about the same amount of money. Uh, GM was made in Mexico, but then again, so was the the old one as well. Was made in Mexico. A matter of fact. The VIN on the truck starts with a three, so it came from Mexico too, the whole thing did. So there's your old PCV hole right here, and the new PCV hole in the, or the PCV hole in the new uh, valve cover is in a different location and slightly shielded. This one also has some holes down in here as well, two of them, that this doesn't have. It does still have the same weep hole here down here. 
both about in the same location. So we're ready to bolt this on. We will get that done and run it around and see if uh, see if it cures our problem. Pretty straightforward so far. Line them up. There is a torque spec for these. I will look it up and we'll do that. dark didn't it all right look up the torque spec oh 106 inch pounds is what I'm coming up with for a torque spec on the valve cover not sure you can read that through this crappy camera or not but that's what we're finding Torque wrench is all set up to 106 inch pounds. Just snug them all down a little first. Whoops, knocked you around there. Feels a little tighter than you'd expect. There we're done. Put the coil pack back on. This has been a pretty quick, easy job. Yeah, that sits in there nice, lines up nice. Snug these up good, not overly tight. Oh, 
missed one. install spark plug wires make sure you feel a little click Got my PCV tube. Now we did replace this little rubber hose here on the end. The old one was just, just starting to crack a little. So no use putting that back on. Plug in the coil pack. And it's got that little clip for it doesn't come apart. Put that back in. Put our engine cover on and we should be done here. One thing that's happened to me in the past, when I put this engine cover on, it pinches one of the coolant lines there. It's probably hard to see. There, I hope you can see it now. I've had the engine cover off a few times, and every time I put it back on, it seems to collect that hose there. So just, if you're doing it, just to make sure that it doesn't, it will cut off the water supply to your heater core. Alright, we should be all set then. We got it all back together. I'm going to uh, start it up, run it around a little bit. Clear out the, the oil in the PCV hose and then we'll let it sit for a while. I'll get fired up again and see if we have any smoke. We'll take it for a spin around the block. Try to clear out the PCB line of any oil that's still in there. I'm sure there's some sitting in the intake manifold too, so just run it around for a little bit. Still pretty skeptical that just a PCB system could be causing so much oil consumption. miles on it and go home let it sit for a while 
and then uh, fire it back up and see if we have any smoke. miles on this it's going to come to a point where it's not worth putting money into anymore just not sure where that point is yet we haven't reached that I don't think usually you figure that out after you've spent way more than you should Like I said earlier, this has just turned into a winter vehicle for me. I bought a Silverado a few years ago and basically park it for most of the winter. Unless we're doing a long trip somewhere where you know you want a little more reliability than uh, than this has. As far as back and forth to work, I've been using this for the last few winters. Living in the Rust Belt. They don't seem to last too long if you, unless you undercoat them, which we have on the Silverado. We never did on this. Never thought the engine would last long enough to make it worthwhile, but I guess I should have. It is getting pretty rusty underneath. Well, I guess now we'll just uh, get back home, shut her off, and wait a while. I'll be damned. No smoke. Oh, just a little puff there. But nothing like we were experiencing earlier. That might have just done the trick. I think I'll pull the PCV hose off and have a look and see if it's still wet inside with oil. I'm really surprised this worked. Hey, we'll pull that back off and take a look. might still be a little oil in there, but it's a lot drier than it was when we first took it apart earlier today. Both sides there. The no oil is dripping out. Not getting it on my fingers. Oh. Looks like this solved our problem. <laughs> Skeptical as I was. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.